Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Giorgio Greco. He is a freelance concept artist at Lucasfilm um, and is based in London, UK. And uh, his portfolio is actually kind of diverse. Um, and I think I'm going to focus more on his sketches just because they're more interesting to me. And I actually do like the way he paints. He's kind of like um, Derek Zabrocki in a way. Or Matthias Sinek, Sneig. <laughs> I did an art review of both of those um, artists um, before. And uh, yeah. And he does go for a more opaque kind of look. And you do see him use the, the mixer brush often. And... Um, like a lot of his pieces feel solid, right? They end up more like paintings. I'm not sure if this guy has a traditional background, but yeah, I think uh, I do like the way he paints. It's again, it's fuller, it's more opaque, and uh, there's kind of a natural oil like traditional feel to his work. It's not as textured. Um, like Greg Rutkowski, but it's definitely in the realm of um, opaqueness. He's kind of like Sid Mead as well, um, based on his sci-fi. Now this piece right here actually does remind me of, I think his name is Mark Kolobayev. Um, I did an art review of his work as well, and um, it kind of reminds me of his work just because of the, the saturation. In these sorts of heads um, you can see a lot of this sort of um, effect in his work in Kolobayev's work um, and it does like a lot of creature designs a lot of sci-fi designs and uh, they look rather interesting he does have like a design lean and you can see sort of repeating shapes and the forms in his designs right especially in, especially in his kind of a uh, personal work um, I do like this one the most. Right. Here again, this one actually does remind me a bit of uh, Raph Lamotan. Just because when he does paint um, in the opaque kind of manner, it feels kind of thick. Right? Like it's not super refined or detailed. Um, but it's more kind of filled up. Like compact, it's not very, it's not necessarily impressionistic, but it's not overly detailed at the same time. I would recommend you check out the uh, the work of Raph Lamotten. Um, this one's more of a keyframe, reminds me a bit of a, uh, shit, what's his name? Alexander Mandrajev, right? Um, and he did use, uh, Mr. Giorgio here did use the blur filter for this part right here. And it's kind of a nice scene. And this there's a bit of a storytelling kind of aspect here. So this is some kind of priestess, perhaps, like a witch, offering some kind of thing or asking for guidance um, from this kind of creature. And it's, su it's super cool because you're actually kind of interested with this kind of story, right? And uh, like a lot of concept art is not about, it's not just about design, right? It's about the story as well. Um, and you can do both, but uh, I think it helps if you kind of know where you want to be. And uh, I think it, it's useful to have skills in both areas, but it's also good to know, again, where you want to be or what you're more interested in. And for me, I think stories are more my thing with some design on the side, right? Um, especially if you're a painting kind of artist, like a 2D painting kind of artist. Um, you're probably going to lean more towards some kind of storytelling, I think, right? I'm just guessing here, but yeah. And again, I like the way he paints. Um, he did use like a... I'm guessing he did use, he did use the mixer brush as well. Um, it's kind of my go-to technique. I usually do it last whenever I paint, just to kind of help um, tone things down. Because oftentimes when you paint, it can become too um, harsh or hard when it comes to like the edges. And it helps if you can soften things up a bit, you know? And you don't have to use like the blur filter or anything like that. All you, all you have to do is just use the mixer brush and just kind of fade some 
edges a bit that aren't, you know, necessarily that important, right? And it helps to actually make it look a bit more artistic, right? Um, I'm guessing he also did add some noise, perhaps, in the end. So this one's more of an environment concept here. Um, for Shattered, it's some kind of game, maybe. And, uh, yeah. So he can do some design stuff, right? But this one's more finished, right? It's, um, quite presentable. <laughs> Cool painting of this kind of statue study. Um, and again, I like the way he paints. It's very, this one's more impressionistic, right? Very, very bold and raw. And it just feels, it feels right to me, right? He's more of a painter, I think. Uh, Mr. Greco, Giorgio Greco. Um, and yeah. Again, I also do recommend the work of Derek Zabrowski just because they have like the same approach. Very, very um, opaque kind of look. Right? They don't tend to use like the round brush. Although I would say Giorgio is more um, playful with his brushes. Like he doesn't just leave or use one brush. Like he likes to vary. He has a bit more brush variety, I would say. Um. Awesome creature designs here. Um, now this one he did use, I think, a lens correction filter. You can see the kind of shift with the reds and blues. Um. It has actually a nice effect, right? It helps also kind of tie your your, your whole painting together or your whole art piece, right? Um, it's the same thing when you're kind of adding noise or a bit of film grain. It kind of ties everything together, you know? It makes it look less... I'm sorry, disjointed, right? I think he did do some 3D for these ones. Um, and again, a bit of lens correction. Reminds me a bit of the designs of... Uh, Nicolic, right? Mark Nicolic, fuck. They have the same kind of biological designs, right? This one's pretty weird. But I do like the octopus <laughs> tentacle here, just because. It reminds me a bit of a uh, Joker's face. You have the red um, markings, right? This one actually looks like a Baroque kind of painting, just because it, this part right here looks like it has some detail in it, but it's just suggested, right? It's not actually painted in, right? Um, I do like these two the most. This guy reminds me of, like the face of this design reminds me of the Kraken in the Clash. Or was it the Clash or Wrath of the Titans, um, right? The Kraken? The one that only appeared in the last part of the film. <laughs> that was kind of annoying actually because... <sighs> it was so short, like the, the fighting scene. Um, you can see him use the mixer brush here as well. right? This, it helps to kind of help <laughs> drag paint around, right? And it does help make it look more ar artistic, right? More painterly. And it fits his general painting approach anyway, so... Yeah. I like this one the most. Right? It's so interesting. And it's not rendered in a way. Because there are artists that really go into detail and render things out. I'm not... I don't think I'm that guy. You know? Maybe a bit, but not too much. I'm more of this guy. This could be the cover of the thumbnail for this video. Um, so this one, I think he's using a more, a simple set of brushes, maybe a round brush, maybe, right? And this one reminds me of John Park, right? A bit of brush variety, but uh, more big picture kind of uh, approach. Although John Park likes to layer a lot his layers, um, Giorgio, I think, is more, more of like a direct kind of painter. So you can see him do some mech designs here, right? If you compare his mech designs to like, say, the, the designs of Anthony Jones, um, both of them have different kind of design styles. Like the forms they use, generally speaking, are different, right? And it shows in their work. So not only you should have, or not only do you have like an art style, like a general artistic approach with how you paint, with how you draw, right? 
with your general kind of process. Um, but you also have like a design style. It, it kind of develops over time as well, where certain forms just seem to show up in your work often. Um, right? And whenever you're designing stuff, I do think it's helpful to just start with grayscale or with like a black and white or grayscale um, values. And to also simplify your brush set just because it helps you focus more on the the forms and the shapes. And you can kind of tone things or you can tone this kind of approach down. This kind of a painting approach because it's more artistic, right? And that can kind of take away time from designing, I think. Like you, you can always do it in the end, you know? Um, anyway. So these are some grass and clouds. Um, it's playing with the compositions I think with the mountain size right and also the the size of the clouds I love how he showed the kind of the lime green in the bottom of the clouds because of the kind of the grasslands here being reflected onto the clouds or under the clouds um, and again look at how the edges aren't that clean it kind of shows you that he's not really heavy. Maybe he does, but not too much. He doesn't overly rely on layering, I think. Maybe he does. He probably did layer the clouds, I'm, I'm guessing here, but it's hard to say. Um, shit, sorry. It just looks more raw, you know? Now this one looks like an oil painting, right? <laughs> uh, some kind of um, caveman, right? Reminds me a bit of that series. It's I think it's this caveman that has a T-Rex as a friend. Like both of their families kind of died. And so they decided to kind of just stick together, right? And uh, I can't remember the name of the series. Uh, shit. Anyway. Now these ones look more like uh, like these ones. They're more textured. Reminds me a bit of a uh, Greg Rutkowski, because the texture is such a a unique thing. Um, of uh, Greg Rutkowski, right? Although Giorgio is more, even though sometimes he'll sometimes he'll use texture texture. Um, he'll still go for a more painterly. Um, approach in that the edges you can tell by the edges they're not that sharp they're kind of a uh, squibbly or kind of loose often and it does make it look a bit more natural right because if you make the edges too sharp wow i love this one Ooh, i like this if you make the edges too sharp it starts to look very graphical you know so i think it's okay to um be chill with the edges right he has a lot of these um, sketches and they're more about developing his brushwork according to him right oh this one's nice has a bit more sharpness to it I think he's using some kind of a flat brush I think right reminds me a bit of a Victor Hugo Armatuk, Armatuk, the Brazilian concept artist right he doesn't do a lot of environments but I've seen him do environments and they also have, or he also has like a same or a similar kind of look. Um, a few tank studies, right? Ooh, nice babe. Some sci-fi stuff, right? Look at that. That's pretty cool, right? And I like how you can show sci-fi concepts in a painterly kind of style, right? Because when you go for a more painterly style, sometimes it fits more of a fantasy kind of world, but uh, sometimes I can see artists display sci-fi um, concepts with a more painterly uh, approach where the edges aren't too clean, where it's more artsy, right? And less kind of mechanical, right? Some lizards and the riders. Um, oh, this one's nice. I like the way he does the highlights. He probably does that in the end. I'm guessing with color dodge, right? Where's the uh, my favorite one? Oh, look at the lighting in this one, right? 
And look at how impressionistic it is. It's really kind of my thing. Like, look at it. It's so, like, energetic. Even though there's hardly any detail, right? You want to be in the fucking world. Whoa. Damn it, Giorgio. Damn it. This one's pretty cool. And, um, where is it? This one's an okay study, I think, or concept, but my heart falls for this piece. This could also be the cover, maybe. Some more sketches here. Nice flamethrower. Reminds me a bit of the concepts of, uh, oh shit, what's his name? Um, Mikhail, Mik Mikhail Baruko. He does like a lot of uh, dystopian types of artwork. Or paintings. I love his mech designs here. Alright, look at the highlights. Well done. And again, it's sci-fi, but it's very, very painterly. Reminds it is he's kind of like a blend between Derek Zabrocki and Matthias. What's his name? Matthias Nig. He has a weird last name. Snig. I did an arch review of his work. Um I don't want to get his name wrong. Oh my god. <laughs> Give me a second here, folks. Um, oh my god. That's so weird. Was he deleted or something? Um, I think I'm just wasting time here. Oh, Snig. Snig. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. This one reminds me a bit of a one of the concepts of uh, I think Jamie Jones. This kind of spaceman kind of suit. But look at the forms of the the V. Oh fuck me, God! Look at the forms of the vehicle in the back. And look at the forms of this kind of creature. They're already repeating kind of shapes, and Giorgio's work, right? And. Uh, like, look at the way he does the highlights, right? Here. And here. He likes that. Um, anyway. So, a crab study. <laughs> again, sci-fi, but it's painterly. And again, the highlights, well done. Same thing here. Right? Look, look at how he's not even going into full detail, right? But he gives the suggestion of the general kind of feel of the mech, right? You don't have to be super cut with your designs, I think. Especially, I think this helps us, especially if you're kind of a, like a painting, more of an artistic kind of dude. Or if you're kind of focused more on the narrative, you don't have to go into that, into like full detail, you know? You can just, you do need to have, or you do need enough detail to kind of suggest, to kind of anchor the whole thing down, but... um yeah, because detail can help to drive focus and obviously give some kind of context. But again, the detail doesn't have to be detailed, right? Ooh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, anyway, reminds me a bit of the Godzilla scene, um, right? Oh shit! I I I think I'm referring to the the one was it um, released in two thousand and three or something or 2001 or, or 2007 no 2003 i think the one people don't consider as godzilla <laughs> that's so mean i mean i get it but uh you know he is my first godzilla right oh another cool concept now here he does use some photo bashing but look at the design again he likes to kind of highlight certain parts or bright in certain areas, right? Wow, look at that. It's so otherworldly, right? So this is kind of a, like a uh, a good standard for like photo bashing and painting. It's it's actually kind of hard to see the painting. It's well blended, right? Um, great concept. Very very oil. oil uh, maybe it does have like a traditional background. Just because of the way he paints, right? And if you're like, um, um, like, 
traditional, you often paint the same way digitally often. Like you don't, you're not fond of layers, right? So I don't know, I'm just guessing here, but uh, yeah. Some more sketches here. Very, very interesting concepts, right? Look at that. A bit of saturation, right? Look at the impressionisticness of it. Reminds me a bit of, what's his name? Scott Gadil. He's based in Texas, I think. He has like a same approach in terms of like the the playfulness of the strokes, but the painting style is more like, um, well, Giorgio and uh, uh, Matthias Snig. Snig? Ooh, this is a great study. Look at the way he did like the, the dunes in the background, right? Pretty amazing. And uh, even the, the columns here. I'm not sure if he used the mixer brush. It's kind of hard to see the blended edges here, but um, yeah. Very, very, it looks very efficiently done, I would say. This one's, I think, based on the... Like, this is like Hellboy, maybe? Maybe? Like? The the dad of Hellboy. Um, awesome. Oh, John Perk has like a lot of uh, studies like this. A lot of like submarine ship studies, tank studies. Um, yeah. Looks very artsy. Oof. I forgot this chick's name. Um... Some more, um, sketches here. Again, with the forms, with the sci-fi forms. His mechanical forms tend to like repeat. Pretty cool, right? And look at the way he did like the background. It looks like a traditional oil painting, right? It kind of fits. Um. So that's it for this review of Giorgio Greco. If you're really more of a 2D painter guy or chick, I recommend you check out Giorgio Greco's work. Um, especially his sketches because he kind of uh, dumps them per post. Um, so yeah, that's it for this. Let me just go to oh, this is my favorite one. <laughs> so that's it for this art review. Um, thank you for watching. Keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.